Margaret. They're hiding me in here. Oh, give us a second, Alice. She'll be fine. I'm not fine. Nothing is fine. She just needs to sleep. I don't sleep. I have bad dreams. Greetings, guests. Welcome to The Patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking The Sedated Housewife. There is a line in The Wolf of Wall Street that Leonardo DiCaprio delivers about his character's love for drugs, specifically about Jordan's love for quaaludes. The quaalude, or lewd as it is commonly referred to, was first synthesized in 1951 by an Indian doctor that's dots not feathers as a sedative and was prescribed to stressed out housewives with sleep disorders. So the term Quaalude is actually the brand name for popular late 60s and 70s drug methaquilone, which was used as a treatment for insomnia and as a sedative and muscle relaxant. It's essentially a tranquilizer that was handed out by doctors like candy to sedate many housewives of that time from their reality. According to an article published in June of 1975 in the Ann Arbor Sun, this drug was heavily marketed to be safe and non-addictive and users of this drug describe the effects as sort of a heavy tranquilizer with a bit of euphoria thrown in. But pretty soon, someone figured out that if you resisted the urge to sleep for just 15 minutes, you got a pretty kick-ass high from it. This article also states that this drug is in fact not safe and that methaquilone eats away at your liver and kidneys and can cause damage to your stomach lining. It also can have a damaging effect on the glands and hormones and eats away at your brain cells like glue. But in the drug's early heyday, the marketing of the brand Quaalude was a play on the words quiet interlude. Yes, these housewives just needed a quiet interlude from their lives. This drug throughout the 70s was heavily misused and abused, so much so that in 1984, the Senate approved legislation that would outlaw the sale of methaquilone by requiring the Justice Department to classify the sedative in the same class as heroin. So why was this so-called quiet interlude or quaalude? Why was this tranquilizer so popular amongst housewives in the 1960s? And why do we see this recurring theme in movies and television of housewives needing to be quote-unquote sedated, whether self-induced or at the hands of their men at all. Let's start with a review of Don't Worry Darling. Don't Worry Darling is a fairly recent film. It came out in 2022 and is a psychological thriller directed by Olivia Wilde and stars Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. This is a very nostalgic film about a young newlywed couple, Alice and Jack Chambers, who live in this picturesque and perfect 1950s-like life in the company town of Victory, California. Jack goes off to work every morning, Alice stays home and fills her day with cleaning the house, shopping with her friends, and going to ballet class. And by the time Jack gets home from work, she has a five-course meal ready for him. And I want to talk about this scene where Jack first comes home from work and passionately starts going down on his wife on the dining room table. I think that this scene was meant to illustrate their newlywed love, but all I could see is that Jack kind of ruined this elaborate dinner that Alice had prepared for both of them by lustfully throwing her on the table where the food was set to satisfy his own sexual desires. And Alice doesn't care at all that her hard work is now all over the floor because life's all about what Jack wants. I mean, these two are so in love, right? But I think that this is the viewer's first clue of Alice's sedation within this story. 
And as the film goes on, many other clues arise for the viewer of Alice's sedation. And the audience also begins to see Alice's ever-growing awareness of this modified state of being that she's playing in. So one scene is where she's cleaning the glass window and suddenly her house begins to close in on her. I believe that this is illustrating that she's subconsciously aware of her own entrapment. Then there's this other scene where she almost suffocates herself with saran wrap. It's almost as if her real self is trying to communicate with her altered self, this plea to free yourself, Alice, by any means necessary. As the plot unfolds, we learn that the company town of Victory in which they reside is actually just a simulation. It's not real. It's a place where men, some of which I don't even think are married, trap their wives and girlfriends so they can play the perfect 1950s pinup wife for them, while they ironically leave and return to the real world each day so they can afford to keep paying for their fantasy. It's kind of like that Black Mirror episode USS Callister where Robert Daly steals his coworkers' DNA and traps them all inside a game. Except that in that show, they're fully conscious in the game and play along out of fear, where Alice has some threads to pull before realizing her reality. Anywho, the reason behind Jack entrapping Alice in this 1950s victory town in the first place is because he thought Alice in real life wasn't having enough sex with him. He thought Alice in real life was too stressed about work. And all in all, Alice in real life was not centering him, so he needed to sedate her so that she would. This is why in every scene where when they're in this simulation, Alice is happy to jump his bones at any moment. At the dinner table, at his boss's house, while his boss watches. And it's also why they don't have any children and just all the time, because Jack needs himself to be the center of her world. When I saw Don't Worry Darling, it all seemed a bit Stepfordish to me. And if you haven't seen my review of Stepford Wives, I'll link it here. But that film is another great example of the sedated housewife, also at the hands of their husbands. Essentially, a bunch of men who aren't happy with the actual human beings that their wives are, you know, the intelligent, creative, successful women that they married, They decide to sedate them and turn them into mindless and docile housewives who don't care about anything but cooking, child rearing, and chores. So what's up with this theme of the sedated housewife? There is an article in Vice from 2015 under the sex section, ironically, titled, Take Some Pills for Your Hysteria, Lady, America's Long History of Drugging Up Women that discusses how women were twice as likely to be prescribed prescription drugs for their depression and anxiety. And when women are prescribed, it's oftentimes for a higher dose and for a longer duration than male patients. This article isn't specifically talking about methaquilone. Valium and Librium apparently saw a surge in the 1950s helping housewives to cope with returning home to their domestic duties after World War II. Which makes one wonder, was only doing domestic work ever all that fulfilling in the way that it's glamorized in TV and film and even with the trad wives trend that we see? Definitely not saying that it's not important work, but if that's all that you have with no other passions or wants or goals, is this why you would technically need to be quote unquote sedated, whether self induced with prescription drugs or as written in fiction at the hands of your husband to do it? What are your thoughts? Please share them down below. And what did you think of Don't Worry Darling? I personally love that film and all of its twisted nostalgia. And as always, thanks for watching and for your continued support of this channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.